All right, guys, we've got Matt Harrison on the line right now. And uh, you're in, what, uh, Oklahoma, correct? You got it. So Matt is in Oklahoma, and uh, he does a little bit of tuning on Fox bodies. I think you've uh, tuned a few, haven't you? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> maybe, maybe more than a few, but uh, yeah, yeah, we, we've been doing this a little while now. So uh, you've been into Fox bodies for a while? Yeah, actually, I got my uh, my first one. God, it's it's been a long time now, but uh, when I was about 17, picked up a little bone stock Fox body, and downhill from there, man. Yeah, tell me about it, right? I think everybody's got a story similar to that. And, and that's the thing, you know, most of our stories, you know, are probably very, very similar. I got a couple questions. So there's there's been a lot of topics that have been brought up lately, you know, about injector sizing and things like that. And I figured I'd bring an expert on rather than, uh, you know, telling the guys, uh, giving them all my opinions anyway. But, uh, you know, one of the first things that, that I kind of want to touch on is, say, let's, let's say you have a stock... Um, like 302 right and uh, maybe you throw a set of heads and a cam on it uh, you know what are your thoughts on it as far as like injector sizes uh, will, will a 19 pound injector still be okay for that setup Ford tried to have a little bit of wiggle room with that 19 pound on you know a bone stock engine they don't want to have it at you know, peak utilization all the time uh, but but they also aren't trying to help you build a race car with with the stock components so you know if it's something Real, real simple, like a set of GT40P heads, um, you know, some headers or some stock ported heads, Cobra intakes, something like that, you might be able to get away with some 19 pounds. It's really anything substantial than that, you gotta start looking uh, something a little bit bigger. Let's say you put a set of heads on the car, right? Let's say we put some, uh, just some twisted wedge heads and uh, a really good camshaft. Now, moving up to like a 24 or 30 pound injector, um, you know, what are the options? What's the correct way to, uh, to get this car to perform right after you do that? Is it just a mass air meter uh, is what I'm saying? Can you go by the mass air meter combo and expect the car to run good or, or what? Well, not really. Um, you know, there's, there's going to be a million guys out there that'll say they have used a calibrated math with some 24s or 30s or 42s or whatever and will swear that the car ran fine, no problems, blah, blah, blah. I mean, yeah, you can get lucky sometimes, but here's what you got to remember about calibrated mass. This is where stuff gets sideways. Not all injectors are made the same. In fact, really no two manufacturers, even if they say it's a you know 24 pound or whatever size it is, no two manufacturers injectors behave the same way. Therefore, it is impossible for a mass air manufacturer to make a mass air meter that's suddenly the perfect meter for any 24 pound injector, right? Because there's just always gonna be some differences. So, you know, uh, can it work? Yeah, it can work okay, but it's it's not gonna be ideal. Now, the, the big reason though why, why I'm so uh, adamant about not going with a calibrated math, especially if you go any bigger than 24s, is that it, it really starts to mess with your ignition timing and your fueling uh, without a custom tune. And obviously the calibrated math, the, the kind of the whole point of that was to try to get guys by without a tune, but uh, but your, you know, the load measurements in the computer are based on an understanding of what your airflow is, your cubic inches and your RPMs. And it can kind of get a sense of, uh, you know, how hard you're, you're working that particular engine. But if it thinks that you're getting less air than you actually are, which is what would happen if you, you know, go to one of those larger calibrated maths, then it thinks you're not working the engine hard your timing goes up uh and you know it's it's just not ideal for for pretty much any combo and that's best case that's assuming you you do get lucky this was a decent pair with your injectors which chances are probably it i guess that's one of the things that i, that I really wanted to touch on and uh, i wanted to kind of make make it be aware the the calibrated mass air meter like like what matt's saying you know we've all done it before right and, and i think you'll kind of agree i mean you can probably get by with like a 24 pound combo and, it, and it'll probably run pretty good but anything much past that is is really a get by and that's something <clears throat> i don't think that's a that's a way that we that we've thought about it in the past you know used to before dyno tunes were really popular that was the correct thing to do. If you didn't have that done, then obviously you didn't do it correctly. Now things have changed. Uh, we have more access to, to dynos and tuners and things like that. So my personal recommendation, and I'm sure Matt's gonna be the same way, is if, if you do go to something like that, like a 30, 36 pound, 42 pound injector, something like that, you really need to get your car dyno tuned and make sure that everything's correct. Because essentially, I mean, what are these mass air meters doing? I, I, could, could we label it as tricking the computer or, or how, would you, how would you word it? 
Yeah, I mean, if your goal is to run it with without a tune, then yeah, that's that's what a calibrated mass air meter is for. Because basically, a mass air meter is just a five volt sensor. Mm -hmm. So the higher the voltage, the more airflow. But it's not a straight line curve. It it actually has a kind of more of a you know an exponential looking or logarithmic style curve. And what a calibrated mass air is, all it's saying is that the shape of the curve should be identical to the shape of the curve of the stock meter. It's just at a bigger scale for, for more flow. For so many years now, we have just assumed that that was the correct way to do things. And, and I'm, I, I mean, I guess we can't say it's the incorrect way, but obviously, you know, if you're going with a, with a, a bigger set of injectors and a mass air meter, more than likely you've made some other changes. You know, you've put a, a cam, some heads, and maybe a different intake, stuff right. like that. So at, at that point, it will really benefit you to, to get a custom dyno tune. So um, one other thing I kind of want to touch on real quick is, is tuners, right? So I run, <laughs> I run a, a mega squirt in my car, a micro squirt, and uh, that you know, back in the day was a, was a really good setup. It was really popular uh, from what I remember, but nowadays it's getting really hard to find somebody to tune that. With that being okay. said, what is your recommendation as far as uh, like a chip or a, a standalone or anything like that? Well, this is my overarching advice, and I don't care what your combo is. This is, <clears throat> this is step one. Figure out who's going to tune your car and ask them. Because, you know, I could say I'm an expert at tuning, you know, this particular car, but that's tuning it with certain platforms that I've used. And there's a lot of them out there I've never touched, you know? Okay. So just because I know how to tune a Ford doesn't mean that I'm going to do a good job tuning it with a system I'm not familiar with. So, you know, that's a key okay. thing. You, you need to figure out your, your reputable tuner, whoever you're going to use ask them what they prefer and ask them to explain why they make the recommendation. Don't just say, oh, okay, that's what you do, so that must be the right way. Ask them why they recommend that. Because a lot of tuners will tune in multiple platforms, mm -hmm. uh, but there's there's a best fit, you that's know, right. if you think about it objectively. So that's what you need to do. Figure out who your tuner is, ask them, and ask them to explain their reasoning. Not that you're, you know, trying to poke holes in their plan, but... yeah, um, and, and, you know, and but that gives you further assurance that the, the company you're trying to work with is the right one. Exactly. And, and that's something that I found out, you know, I, which I planned on tuning, you know, my own car. So I bought the, uh, the Mega Squirt, put it in the car, and, and I actually love the Mega Squirt. I have nothing negative to say, except for the fact that there's really nobody to tune that around here. Uh, I don't even yeah. know anybody around my area, honestly, uh, short of maybe a, uh, outside of a 150 mile radius that'll, that'll tune that. So that's an issue that I have. So that's something like, like you said, that you need to do first. You need to talk to your tuner and, uh, find out what it is that they want to do, uh, what they want to use and what they're comfortable with. Let's talk about injector sizing in general. So, I sure. mean, can you, can you go too big on an, on an injector for your car, for your setup, or is that a thing or is that a myth or, or what is the deal with that? That, that's a very real thing, but you, you got a lot more wiggle room there than, uh, than you might think. So this, this is the only reason for the most part you could ever say you went too big. You know, what you have to realize is that an injector, when it first is asked to open and the pulse width starts, they don't really behave very normal. They're, they're, there's a rush of fuel coming in. It's just starting to open. It doesn't really behave as advertised, but once it's open and now it's just allowing the flow to go through, then it starts to behave normal. So what you have to really watch out for minimum pulse width, because what they're basically saying is if, if you know, like, so let's say you put like a, I'm just getting crazy here, like a 210 pound Bosch injector in a stock 5.0. Okay. It's like 10 times more than you need. Yeah. To get the amount of fuel out of that injector that that little tiny low horsepower engine needs, the, the pulse width is so short that it doesn't behave well at all. And it gets to a point where there's just nothing you can do in the tune to make it suddenly consistent and accurate. So basically your idle ends up suffering when you get to that point where you've gone too big. Now, there's also in most tuning platforms, you also get to put in what is the minimum allowed pulse width. That's something you put in the tune. So, you know, again, if you start trying to go that calibrated math route, you, you put a way bigger set of injectors, but you're not able to adjust that minimum pulse width in the tune. That could really cause you some issues too, where you have an overly rich condition because it's it's forcing it to pulse a lot more and it won't allow it to go any lower, even if it's capable of it. That's the big one. Now, if you're gonna go custom tune, as far as, you know, assuming that that's not gonna be an issue for you, 
Yeah, if it's tuned properly, you can just about tune around any other corks of the injector. Okay. But that's something that there's just no way around. There's no shortcuts there. After talking with you and, and honestly kind of looking back at tuning my own car and, and the uh, pulse width and stuff like that, I get what you're saying. So, you know, like I said before, you know, I always tell guys you don't, you don't need these huge injectors. And it's true to a point unless you're going to go get a custom dyno tune. So that's, that's where the difference is. So, and this is why I wanted to have, you know, Matt on, on here today, guys, is for this reason, because I knew that there were some gaps that needed filling for me too. So, uh, you know, this is, this is beneficial to everyone. So, you know, I would say this, I mean, and, and, or, you know, we'll talk to Matt a little bit more about it, but, uh, don't put too big of an injector in, in a really mild car unless you're going to go get this thing custom dyno tuned. You know, if you've maybe, like you said, put a set of GT40 heads, intake, something like that, and you just want to run some 24 pound injectors with a calibrated mass air meter. I mean, Matt, you think, I mean, that would, that would be a get by, right? I mean, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be that big of an issue. Yeah, you, you can usually get by with that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but outside of that, you know, um, and I'm not trying to put words in his mouth, but I, I think for, for you guys, you know, trying, you know, this channel, we try to stay budget, right? I, I, I want you guys to be able to enjoy your car, but enjoy it, you know, as cheaply as possible. And like Matt said, I mean, there, anything much past that, I've seen problems. I'll give you a good example. My buddy Ray Enfinger had a, a decently hot little setup, had a set of aluminum heads, um, a comp cams, uh, camshaft, all the stuff, right? Heads, cam, and take. And I think he had 30, 30 or 36 pound injectors in the car, something like that. I can't remember. And uh, the car ran decent. It had a calibrated mass air meter. It ran decent. Well, Ray took the those injectors out and put his 19s back in with that mass air meter and the car actually ran better. Now, what does that tell you? That tells you exactly what Matt was saying, that everything it, it doesn't work that way sometimes when you get into the bigger injectors uh and you start throwing them at these cars with just a calibrated mass air meter so I, I think you'll agree matt that car with a custom dyno tune and those 30 whatever pound injectors would have probably been night and day difference yeah absolutely night and day so that kind of is, is help proving the point that he's trying to make to you guys that that calibrated mass air meter uh just thrown on a car on like a mild or hot setup it isn't going to be the the, the cure-all so you really need to get these cars down and tuned and you know <clears throat> matt i've been telling them for for years now you know these cars are pretty forgiving so uh, what's your opinion i mean as far as the the fox body being more forgiven than say some of these new cars i think you could probably agree with that right <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, i i happen to own a 27 gt with a with a blower on it and i can definitely tell you that uh, it doesn't take a whole lot there to make the car absolutely undrivable i mean something as simple as changing a throttle body uh you got a lot of data you have to plug in and it has to be perfect that's right i mean like there's <laughs> there's math behind it and it has to be right yeah this drive-by wire stuff and all the other fancy stuff yeah it's uh it's a whole lot harder than it used to be yeah those fox bodies they'll they'll take a beating mm -hmm. they'll last a long time i mean you know and even stuff like the you know the 500 horsepower deal and all that i mean truth is if you respect the balance of the engine not over rev it and you have a good tune with safe timing mm -hmm. you'd be shocked what you can force through one of these and, and actually do it not just for a couple passes but do it for a couple seasons exactly you know? so there's one other thing i want to ask you about and that is uh, speed density cars here lately i've had so many people ask uh can i put heads cam on a speed density car can you tune a speed a speed density car uh without a standalone unit yeah yeah sure i mean the the speed density while it's a, a totally different computer that you know ford put in those uh and you know the the settings are a little bit more primitive because just it was an earlier year computer uh, before they switched to mass air uh, slightly less capabilities but in general yeah you still have full control over everything that computer does if you want to tune it <coughs> okay uh, so yeah you can tune that stock computer in fact i mean i've i've even worked with people that have you know turbos on mm -hmm. a speed density deal with a stock computer you can still tune that if you you know kind of know the tricks to get around some things wow <laughs> so it can, it can definitely be done but yeah if no tune on these things um, the camshaft is going to be the single biggest effect where it goes from it, it would be able to drive to it won't drive because with speed density, everything's driven based on vacuum, essentially. That, that plays a huge role in everything, whereas with mass air, it plays very little role. Right. So uh, that's the big thing is when you go to a really big cam with a lot of overlap or whatever, um, it's, it's just going to have probably a whole lot less vacuum. 
and without a tune, it just isn't going to respond well. And the problem with a vacuum-based system also is that if you get in any kind of a situation where maybe things aren't quite right, so you get a little bit of that swinging idle or, you know, kind of some of that surging, that sort of deal, mm-hmm. it'll start to get really out of whack really fast because when you're on the top end of the surge and about to come down, you know, you're at kind of one side of the spectrum of how much vacuum you have. And then as the, the RPMs dip low, you're on the other extreme and it's swinging back and forth and having a huge effect on your fuel. So it, it just kind of, it's almost like a turbo. It's just out of control and you don't have a way to bleed off the, the problem. You know? Yeah. Tell me about it. Uh, I have ran into that, you know, with my car. So, you know, you know, mine is speed density as well. I have run into situations where I have to box in the timing and the fuel to, to make it, you know, act right because it just wants to wander all over the place. But um, I guess one of the biggest things, you know, that something new that I learned today was that you could actually tune the speed density computers. Guys, I had no clue of that. I had no clue that that could be done. So that's why we do these. That's, that's why we're having this conversation right now. So we all learn. So, uh, hey, you guys that are speed density, you know, and, and if you don't want to go to mass air, you, know, you can be tuned. Uh, absolutely. Let's see, Matt, is there anything else we want to want to cover? Well, you know, on, on the whole conversation of just bigger injectors and what are some other things to look out for, you know, let me give a little bit of other advice. You know, we talked about one key thing is always figure out who your tuner is going to be first get their advice on some of this stuff here's another really critical thing this is just coming from the perspective of a tuner professional tuners do this for a living okay they have to get paid for their work which is totally reasonable and they're doing it to be profitable it's a business right Mm -hmm. so nothing wrong with that but what that means is if you hand them a bunch of really weird parts that you don't know what it is and they don't know what it is and you're trying to make them tune around those sorts of things what they're going to do is they're going to give you a, a, a tune that even for their own capabilities is inferior. They, they would be able to give you a better quality outcome with at least a part that you know what it is. So and the reason I bring it up with injectors is the two parts that are critical on a Fox body are mass air meter and injector. If you right. don't know what you have, it's a, a nightmare man. for a tuner to try to get right without just spending lots and lots of time and either charging you a bunch more for it or just charging you what they agreed on, but then just giving you kind of a sub subpar tune so with injectors I, not to plug anybody i don't sell any of this stuff so that's not my intent but let me just tell you some manufacturers that publish the data you need ford racing is going to be your your number one go-to because for most of the, the simple street car applications and i'm going to say all the way up to about an 80 pound injector ford has a whole bunch of size ranges all the way from stock to, to 80 pounds the price point is very affordable especially as you get into some of those uh you know you get into 47s and 60s and 80s their price points very reasonable Absolutely. and they publish the full data that you need to tune it not just okay. some of it but all of it you need slopes break points offsets whole bunch of numbers i won't bore you with it but mm. it's not just saying it's a 42 pound or a 30 pound or whatever there's a lot more data you need so ford racing is a good one for your kind of you know, moderate build type setups. Mm -hmm. And then we start to get into bigger stuff. Look at fuel injector clinic or injector dynamic. Injector dynamic. They have absolute complete info for everything about their injectors out there. That helps. I I actually, I didn't even know pro M made injectors, but I stumbled across them the other day because a customer used them. Um, Pro M does the same thing for the ones they sell. They have published data just about, I won't say everybody, but just about everybody else will give you like, They'll give you the, the flow rate mm-hmm. and maybe a minimum pulse width, and that's about it. Again, not not real good results. And then same thing on the mass air meters. Mm-hmm. You know, companies like Pro M will give you a calibration sheet that comes with your meter. It's actually that exact meter they sold to you on a you know uh, some some test equipment, giving you real data that you can plug into the tune. It'll always be a little different in the laboratory versus a Fox body, but it's it's very very close. Makes the tuning process a lot easier. You go with some random meter that you don't know anything about. You got no calibration sheet for it. You don't know what size tube it was supposed to be, you know, put into. Man, you're you're just guessing on all this stuff and it's the yeah. process of tuning is just harder. Yeah, and you and you're putting a, a lot of stress on your tuner. I had 80 pound Ford racing injectors in my Cobra. And literally, like he's saying, guys, you can go get injector slope brake point. Everything you need is right there for you. It's easy. You plug the numbers in and it's cool. Well, I bought this on three turbo kit and I, I got whatever injectors, you know, come with theirs. 
guys, I, unless I'm just looking in the wrong place, can't find really anything on these injectors. <laughs> so yep. it was trial and error. I mean, does it work? Absolutely. But um, I could only imagine taking this car to somebody, like you said, just put a turbo on it, you know, put some injectors in the car that you don't know anything about, you have no information. Uh, you know, all of this stuff and you just dump it off on a tuner, guys, you're gonna get charged. <laughs> you're definitely gonna get charged. And and that's probably, I, I guess you could look at it this way, that's the difference between taking a car for a retune uh, versus taking something that's not even ran yet and you wanna get it all tuned. You're gonna be charged more for that, for their time. So like a retune typically doesn't, you know, cost you as much and, and that's probably a good example. I do have one other thing that's really worth talking about too, cause it, it has a direct effect on knowing what you're, uh, injector size should be okay so again if you're trying to figure out well what should i put in here this is another critical aspect what's your fuel pressure going to be that you're running okay. because a fuel injector you know when you when you look at the spec sheets for a set of injectors that's another thing that they give you they'll say um, all of the this data that you can put in your tune this is based on running this injector at a very specific pressure so like ford they'll do theirs at 39.15 psi uh, a lot of injector manufacturers do it at 43 and a half, just three bar. Um, some are rated even different than that. And of course you could put your fuel pressure wherever you want it if you have an adjustable regulator. So, uh, so that's another critical thing to bring up because as the pressure increases, you can generally get a lot more flow out of an injector if and only if you've got enough fuel pump to support that. Good and that's, that's another thing that kind of, you gotta play a balance between the you know the injector and the fuel pump because as if you start to really turn the fuel pressure up and you've got kind of already a somewhat of an undersized fuel pump mm -hmm. it's not going to be able to keep up and you're going to end up going lean up top what we were talking about earlier with pulse with how does that affect it if you go to, to changing the fuel pressure i mean obviously it's going to richen the car up that pulse width i guess uh yep. the open time is really going to dump a lot more fuel in there correct yeah, so if, if it doesn't understand by being told what's going on, hey, shorten your pulse width, you're going to end up getting more fuel than you did before. Okay, so which, so, I mean, it, I guess that's kind of obvious by turning the fuel pressure up. But let's say if this is a workaround then, uh, you could uh, turn your fuel pressure up, maybe get a little bit more out of your injector, and then sure. come in and adjust the pulse width to uh, help with idle. Is that is that uh, feasible? Oh, absolutely. Okay. And I, I run into that really commonly with, uh, you know, a decent build heads cam intake with a blower on it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, back in the day, a lot of guys would go the just the absolute go to was the 42 pound lightning injector. They yes. were dime a dozen, real easy to find. It's a quality injector, mm -hmm. you know, cool. Everybody used it. But what you start finding out is a 42 pound injector doesn't go as <laughs> particularly far when you start doing a full top end plus a blower with any, you know, more substantial boost, you know, 10, 12 pounds, mm -hmm. that 42 pound injector runs out real quick. Sorry guys, we had some technical difficulty, so we're gonna kind of backtrack if we can. So you were you were talking about uh, sometimes that's not enough injector with the 42 pound injectors. So uh, just kind yeah. of go from there if you will. Yeah, yeah, so like, you know, the guys back in the day, they'd use a, you know, head cam intake with a Vortec. Mm -hmm. They'd go ahead and put uh, you know, 42 pound injectors on there because they were easy to get a hold of. But that 42 pound injector in a boosted application doesn't go nearly as far as it would in a naturally aspirated. Because, you know, when you've got a blower on there, you got to remember too, that's like belt driven. So to get that like true rear to the tires horsepower, you got to make a whole lot more crank horsepower to, to get there. So, True. Uh, so what guys can do though, is if you are going to get a custom tune, you can take an injector that maybe is just a little bit undersized, jack the fuel pressure way, way up and you get it to behave like it's a much larger injector and you won't go lean up top and you've got, you'll gain back that upper RPM range without, uh, you know, damaging things. Awesome. To be honest, there's even arguments sometimes that, that you're better at higher pressures, you know, like coyote car. It runs at 60 PSI from the factory. You know, it's not 39 like the old stuff. Yeah. And I think some of these manufacturers actually figured out that as you start to increase the pressure, you get uh, a little bit of a different flow pattern mm -hmm. uh, or a spray pattern coming out of the injector and it has better atomization characteristics. I can see that. So, you know, so actually there might even be some benefits to doing that. Now, again, if you, you can't go crazy because that's another thing that injectors are rated on is maximum pressure you're allowed to run them at. You can't just say, oh, let's run at 150 PSI or something wild, you know, It'll, yeah. <laughs> that's not going to work for yeah. you. But, uh, but within reason, though, you know, sometimes there's actually more benefits to it. 
That's awesome. See, that, like I said, guys, this, this is why we're doing this, because I'm learning, you guys are learning, uh, and, and look, nobody wants to give this type of information out. You know, these days with the internet, yeah, you're able to, you're able to get some of this information, but is it right? Is it good information? Do you, do you know who it came from? So that's why we're doing this kind of little series, I guess you could say, is to really spread the word. So you guys share this video, talk about it. Uh, that's what this is for, is to help one another. Matt, brother, I appreciate you uh, you helping us out with this today. Uh, I learned a lot. There, I realized that uh, there's a lot of this stuff that, that I've been talking about that probably wasn't 100% true. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I do appreciate you taking the time. And uh, I'll have all of your information up on the screen. And uh, you guys, look him up if you're in the area. Matt, uh, you, are, are you tuning yet? Are you, are you able to take any cars? Oh yeah, yeah. We're we're doing a lot of remote tune work right now, but uh, we we try to keep at least one or two cars rotating in, uh, you know, every week also. So, yeah, bring them on. Let's let's talk and see if we we got a good fit for you. All right, man. That sounds good. So, guys, check him out. Uh, that's Matt Harrison, uh, Leach Motorsports. And we're gonna go ahead and wrap this portion up. Uh, this may end up being a two-part video because we've been going now for about 30 minutes. So we may uh, separate this. So uh, either way, guys, as always. Thanks for watching. Yeah, that's something that I noticed uh, really early on uh, whenever I was messing with mine. I was like, you know what, man, I can go buy a, a $20 spring and literally just add some more KPA to the car and I'm good. Yeah. I mean, it was that simple and I was just blown away at, at how easy it was. But, but at the same time, I feel like I chase my tail a lot more with speed density versus mass air because it's just it, it, i feel like from a from a you know a diy guy <clears throat> i'm chasing my tail because the car can't compensate for me there, there's not a there's not as much compensation with a speed density car and when the weather changes and pressures change it's like the car just goes nuts it, it seems to be more aggravating than the mass air cars is that just me or is that is that actually no, a thing I'm, I, they're, they're just harder to get the drivability out of them and the idle quality and the like you said the changing weather conditions they really are more sensitive to that kind of stuff the mass air for drivability and ease of tuning it's a whole lot easier to deal with at least in my opinion you know and like a lot of the the, uh, the gm crowd those tuners mm -hmm. they're just used to doing things with speed density because that's what you know that's just the way that that was been for a long time but mm -hmm. you know the ford I mean, Ford has been using mass air for a very long time, and they still do. That's right. So, well, let me ask you. Let me ask you something. Um, is what's the deal? I've heard that you can have both mass mass air meter and speed density, and you can run all, idle off of mass air and then switch over speed density. Is that a thing? Yeah. There's, the, yeah, and that's actually there's modern computers like the Coyote stuff I'm getting into now mm -hmm. does that. They they have both actually, okay. but some of it is is actually not about trying to like okay well in scenario one let's use it do it this way and then in scenario two let's switch over to math vice versa but a lot of it has to do with failure mode so if the mass air meter fails because oh. back in the day when a mass air meter failed it went into lymph mode and you'd be lucky if truly you could limp it home i mean it, it was there's not much you can do there to, to make it drivable without that meter <clears throat> but with the new stuff it just falls back on a speed density as long as that's tuned right you can almost not even notice anything happen okay that's pretty cool I, other I, than maybe seeing a check engine light so it's a lot of it's more of that fault tolerance and, and just a failure mode that works a lot better than the old ones did okay yeah that's cool i, I had heard <clears throat> you know something about that but to be completely honest with you i didn't really know um but you know the speed density stuff really to me is 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 awesome i like it it's so freaking easy and uh you don't really have to worry about the whole mass air meter thing but uh <laughs> at the same time man i just feel like i do not like you said i don't get the drivability it's consistently i'll say as i did with a mass yeah. air car um it, it's like there's always a new hiccup somewhere and <laughs> and it's like you know i, I kind of would hate that for somebody who maybe brought you a car that was speed density and expected this thing okay it's now it's custom dyno tuned so it should always just run great i mean i think you run into more problems with that right i mean versus like a, a mass air car that you've tuned uh you probably have more issues i guess with the uh, speed density car once it left the, the the dyno yeah yeah so yeah yeah the mass air stuff i mean once you once you get through that tune it's pretty resilient and it'll deal with a lot of change 
conditions with well, I guess it makes sense because I mean, uh, back, I mean, what well, I say back in the day, I mean, you can throw a cam in these cars and never have to change the mass air or tune it or anything. I mean, you could do that. So I guess that kind of makes sense where you can't do that with a speed density car. So that uh, you know, the part of the system that's getting your fueling decisions is the mass air meter, and that has nothing to do with vacuum. So yes, the voltage will go up and down as it you know if your RPM start to fluctuate or something, but your you know your fuel is directly impacted in a very major way like a very major way. yeah and vacuum and that's where it just doesn't work so well with speed density and you really have to jump through hoops to to kind of normalize things and